Most people remember Gallipoli as one of the worst campaigns of World War I and one of Winston Churchill's biggest failures. But in Australia and New Zealand, it is remembered for a different reason. Gallipoli helped the two countries to come together as nations and establish their presence in the world. But doing this was not bloodless nor easy. On April 25th, 1915, the Australian and New Zealand Armory, Army Corps, abbreviated ANZAC, landed at a place called Ari Bernu, over one mile further north than their planned landing site. Today, Ari Bernu is known as ANZAC Cove. 25,000 men scrambled up the steep cliffs of the cove, but were played by bad maps and bad terrain. Units were constantly getting separated from one another, and the entire landing was disorganized. The Ottomans organized a counterattack and drove the confused Anzacs up what is known as 400 Plateau. Although some commanders recommended a full retreat, the Anzacs were ordered to dig in and hold their positions. By the end of the day, the Anzacs had already lost 2,000 men and were quartered in a narrow 1.2 mile box on the beach. This was only the beginning of a long and horribly bloody struggle that would last until January 1916. By that time, about 65,000 Anzacs had fought at Gallipoli. Over half of them, around 35,000, became casualties. And this number does not even include the number who were sent home as sick, whether from a disease or mentally. Gallipoli utterly destroyed young men's minds just as much as any battle during the First World War, perhaps even more so due to the insane proximity between the two forces at times. However, the Turks and the Anzacs managed to gain a sort of respect for one another. After a disastrous Ottoman assault on May 19th, the two armies signed a formal truce in order to bury their dead. The Anzacs called their foes Johnny Turk. Semi-friendly exchanges occurred when they were not fighting. Food and cigarettes were tossed across no man's land to the opposing trenches. Mustafa Kemal, who commanded the Ottoman army Gallipoli, and who would later change his name to Ataturk and become the leader of Turkey, gave a speech in 1934 memorializing the Anzac soldiers. The heroes who shed their blood and lost their lives on this country's soil. You are in the soil of a friendly country now. Therefore, rest in peace. You are side by side with the little Mehmets. Mehmets being a common name for a Turkish soldier like the British Tommy. The mothers who send their sons to the war, wipe your tears away. Your sons are in our bosom, are in peace, and will be sleeping in peace comfortably. From now on, they have become our sons since they have lost their lives on this land. Several memorials were built showing the soldier bond between the Turks and the Anzacs. In 1997, a sculpture was made called the Respect to Mehmet Memorial, which depicts an Ottoman soldier carrying a wounded Australian officer. It is based on a real account of a Turkish soldier after wearing a white, raising a white flag to cease fire between the two opposing forces, carried a wounded Australian officer out in no man's land back to the Australian trench, and then returned to his own. Today, Anzac Day is celebrated in Australia and New Zealand as a day of respect for their veterans, and is an even larger holiday than Remembrance Day. Thousands of Australians and New Zealanders come to visit Gallipoli on this day every year to honor their family and countrymen who fought futilely and died here over a hundred years ago. In a brief moment of silence, we will remember all who fought at Gallipoli, be it Anzac, Turk, Brit, or French. This next segment is gameplay from the Gallipoli operations in G Battlefield 1. Though these maps are more based on the British assault at Cape Helles and Carithia, the medic for the British side is modeled as an Anzac soldier, and the Carithia attacks were historically meant to be diversions to distract Ottoman forces from Anzac assaults on positions in their own sector. This gameplay is not meant to do anything other than to pay respect for those who fought at Gallipoli and give a small glimpse into the frantic and bloody conditions of the fighting. The Allies begin their major combined arms offensive against the Ottoman Empire. Their ultimate goal, to control the sea route from Europe to Russia. 
The first step in that plan required the control of the Dardanelles, a narrow waterway leading to the Turkish capital, Constantinople. Bazılarına göre imparatorluğumuzun sonu geldi. Ancak biz ateş gibiyiz. Yeniden alevlenmemiz için bir kıvılcım yeter. Bir zamanlar tek atımlı tüfeklerimiz vardı. Şimdi bu seri ateş eden Norden fel silahlarıyla modern çağı tam anlamıyla ayak uydurduk. Biz silahlarımızı küçük ölüm elçileriyle doldururuz. İşgalciler şunu unutmasın. Biz ıskalamayız. Soldiers, today the devil attempts to steal our home from us. He will try to take our shores at Cape Helles. We will not let him. He will then try to take our fortifications at Sedelbar. We will not let him. He will try to take our coastal batteries at Morto Bay. We will not let him. Finally, he will try to capture our high ground at Karapkala. Resolutely, we will not let him. Today, soldiers, we kill the devil. Başlayın. Victory is ours. Praise Colonel Kemal for his brave leadership. But also be prepared, for they will come again. The enemy is being reinforced with a dreadnought. This is first day.
machine gun. Another loss, soldiers. But do not let exhaustion sink you. From all over the Empire, you men came to end this war. To the last! First aid, get packed up! Catch your wounds. There's some first aid. The Ottomans have a resilience we have to admire. Here, on sand and rock, we nobly accept defeat. The Allies withdrew from the Gallipoli Peninsula in January 1916. After six months of continuous fighting, the Allies had lost over 44,000 men, and the Turkish twice that number. No ground was gained at all by the British. While the campaign did divert large Turkish forces away from the Russians, it was a military disaster, unifying and motivating the Ottomans instead of defeating them. Winston Churchill was demoted and then resigned from the cabinet. Colonel Mustafa Kemal became the people's hero and was later to become the founding father of the Turkish Republic. Such was 